staring at me. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank Byron and Dan and the rest of the management team for inviting me here. It's great to see you all. I'd like to start out, before we get to my slides, just to say a couple of words about some observations I've had about rain. I've been working with Dan and his team for about 10 months, and of course I've been here for a number of hours just watching as things transpire. I've been working in the food and nutrition industry for 30 years, and I'm a student of business practices and a keen observer of what people do correctly and wrong. I've worked with some of the largest companies in the world and with some really dynamic startups. And I'd like to say that what I've observed here, and I've heard repeated in other forms today, is a culture of excellence. And there is another theme as well that we can see in the three words that we're using for this convention, discover, exceed, expand, that ties wonderfully into an exceptional branch of scientific research that's come about in the last five or 10 years called research into positive psychology. And really it's what a lot of us practice already, especially those of us in successful businesses, but it's giving us a wonderful scientific foundation to validate some of those things we know. And that is that positive thinking, positive planning, a positive approach on life and forward thinking is a way to, to success. And that the, op the opposite of that, that negative thinking that leans upon regret, self-doubt, rumination, looking backward, those things re retreat towards zero. So positive thinking is expansive. We use the word here, expanding. And it's expansive possibility. Now an important thing is that we don't just think. We also put actions in place. And what I've seen here in the work I've done with RAIN over 10 months in looking at a specific action plan for scientific testing, in the agenda for this convention, discover, exceed, expand, these are all thinking optimistically about the future, intending to do something, and then acting upon it. And to me, this is an exceptional, it, it bodes very well for the company and for the future and for all of you as well. Now, wouldn't you know that I happen to pick as a way of envisioning seed nutrition. I picked a Google image of the Big Bang explosion. And I think it perfectly captures this concept of from small things, big things come, especially when we apply the principles and the methods and the actions of positive thinking. And I would add one more thing, that there's a very great importance placed in, in positive psychology on the beneficial effects of a large group, of, a, of, a, of an expanding family network, people who share goals, who share an approach to advancement and to put those, those goals and actions in place. So now to, the, to my specific slides. As I mentioned, my role has been to do some very specific testing and to recommend specific testing to the RAIN team. So we've just heard Dr. Jeff talk very knowledgeably about the importance of so many of these phytonutrients or phytocompounds. My role was to help RAIN focus our attention on learning more about how the actual soul product performs. So we take all of those good natural sources and ingredients, we put them into a finished product. Now how does that finished product perform? And I'll also take a step back here and describe how the outlook of the te this testing, this series of tests that we've put in place speaks to this culture of excellence. These are tests, none of which is required by the regulatory agencies who govern what we put on the back of the labels or who govern how we sell and trade products or advertise products. These are all tests which have been done voluntarily and with a, with a vision for improving and understanding 
of the sole product and how it performs. And that, to me, again, is worthy of real applause. So from, from tiny things, great things come. And again, I think this, and I'll repeat this at the end, but I think this is a wonderful model for envisioning ourselves in a larger group pursuing important goals and dreams. So I've tied my comments today in my slides to these three key themes that are very important as we investigate the future. The one is to discover. How does that relate to the soul product? Well, let's look at what is at the heart of soul and what makes it tick. And you'll see, we'll be re in this case, we'll be returning to this theme of phytonutrients. I refer to them as phytocompounds. Second, exceed. Let's look at how this testing protocol that we've performed over 10 months exceeds industry expectations and industry standards, which will, I hope, convey a great confidence to you in, in uh, working with this product. And finally, expand. How do these tests expand our understanding of how soul works, how it helps us care for our bodies and optimize wellness and, and health? and perhaps also form a path of further investigation for the future. Every serving of soul provides us a balanced delivery of phytocompounds, phytonutrients, and antioxidants. Now, I can say this, but we can also demonstrate this, and this is part of what I'll be showing. And once again, rather than looking in general, in broad swaths at the science the PubMed studies, the other published research literature that backs this up, we're looking very specifically at putting soul to the test in tests of importance and significance. And this is how we will look at the balanced antioxidant protection and about comprehensive support of health, uh, healthful body functions. And again, I say proven performance because we've got the tests to back it up. Now, just a quick review. Phytocompounds, or the phytonutrients that Dr. Jeff was talking about, provide support to a wide range of health-related functions. He talked in detail about ways that phytocompounds will support the proper function of our immune systems, our cardiovascular sy systems, the mitochondrial function, other functions of the cells, and a wide range of other health-related functions in the body. So let's move beyond that general understanding and look at the sole product. Now, I've only listed three primary ingredients here, but what we see when we look at the specific ingredients that are going into the sole product is that we get a balanced distribution and coverage across three or four of these main phytocompound groups. Now, once again, in Dr. Jeff's comments, he described a a number of different compounds and their compound families. There are thousands of phytocompounds in the various plant species that we use for nutritional purposes. But they often fall into some main compound families. And rather than going into great detail, it's, it is adequate to say here that the primary ingredients in the sole product are providing comprehensive distribution across these primary groups. And I'll say something else that Jeff alluded to, and that is that whole foods, products in what we call their natural matrix, have shown to be far better for you than products which have been isolated, broken away, extracted from the way nature made them. In fact, two years ago, I worked on a major study with the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State in, uh, in Oregon, they're experts in vitamin C and were begun by the, the double Nobel laureate Linus Pauling. And we looked at proving that a natural source of vitamin C can outperform synthetic vitamin C when looking at important human health markers such as inflammation, and, and it did. So in, this just supports common sense that if you're removing something from its natural environment, it's not going to work as well. 
That's true for human being, it's true, true for other animal species, and it's certainly true for healthful natural foods. Now, uh, once again, Dr. Jeff alluded to some of the important kind of superstar compounds that you can find in these ingredients. So for black cumin seed, it's thymoquinone. In black raspberry seed, one of the family of key, and key compounds would be the vitamin E tocopherols. And in grape seeds, some of the important procyanidins. All of which, again, are linked to studies that demonstrate their, their importance in supporting vital human health functions. And once again, keep in mind that we're looking at how these things all come together in the sole product to work on your behalf. So we first began by looking at antioxidant capacity. And we had to choose a test that made the most sense most, and was the most responsible test to use for looking at the antioxidant potential of soul. We didn't have to look far. We picked ORAC. I've been working with ORAC for over 10 years. But just last year, AOAC, which is an international governing body for methods, for analytical methods, selected ORAC as an official method for measuring antioxidant capacity in foods. And they said in their comments about that selection that a primary reason was its versatility in measuring antioxidants in a wide range of foods. So it was the obvious choice. There's another reason for that obvious choice. Its original inventor and its main advocate over 15 years of use in the industry was recently awarded by Thomson Reuters uh, or he was named, I should say, as one of the world's most influential scientific minds. This is a close friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Ronald Pryor, who for almost 30 years ran the USDA's antioxidant research program and was almost single-handedly responsible for bringing ORAC to the fore in consumer understanding and in building a very large database of ORAC values for commonly consumed foods. Now, he's done a lot more than that since, and most of that we'll return to because it's been involved in taking the research based on nutritional antioxidants and linking it to outcomes in human health. In other words, helping us translate what does an ORAC value mean when we actually consume the products that have high ORAC values. We'll return to that later. So what we know about ORAC 5.0, this was the panel of ORAC-based tests we used to, me to test Seoul. It measures antioxidant performance against pro five primary radicals. These are five free radicals that are abundant in human metabolism. There are hundreds of others. These five primary ones are extremely important, are implicated in a wide range of uh, health conditions that are caused by oxidative damage. And oxidative damage damages the proteins, DNA, and lipids in our bodies that are required for our bodies to function properly. And second, ORAC 5.0 is an industry standard for broad spectrum antioxidant testing. In fact, it's the test that's most frequently used by the greatest number of companies and in, in peer-reviewed research studies. Now, a little caveat before, we, before I speak to these numbers. Numbers are not as important as what those numbers tell us about the direction and the significance of the test because any one number might change, and it's very important that we keep them in context. But let me tell you, so in the broader picture, let me tell you what these numbers mean. What they mean is that a serving of soul is significant in protecting against, oxidati against oxidative damage and protects against five primary radicals in a significant way. 
It's broad spectrum antioxidant protection. Now, just to give a little more context, and again, I recommend not to do a numbers to numbers contest of Sol versus other products, and we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. But it is important to put the Sol or Act 5.0 results at least in comparison to something else. So you see, it's not floating by itself. And to me, the most meaningful way to consider those values is to compare it to foods that people commonly consume. Now, for those of you who've come from a distance and from other countries, this data relates to food commonly consumed by people in the United States. What I've looked at here is the most, is an average, the ORAC value for an average of the leading fruits and vegetables consumed in the United States based on the USDA's ongoing survey of food consumption. And we didn't cherry pick the ones with low antioxidant capacity like cucumbers or celery, which have their own nutrient benefits, but from an antioxidant standpoint aren't considered particularly high. We picked the leading fruits and vegetables with the highest levels of antioxidants, at least that are consumed on a routine basis. So while strawberries and oranges and apples are in there, something much less common like perhaps pomegranate would not be. And here what we see is, again, for purposes of giving us a perspective Seoul is two and a half times higher than an average serving of those average fruits and vegetables. I think that's a very important basis for comparison. Let's move quickly to the concept of exceeding. I mentioned at the outset that all of these tests are, have been voluntary at considerable expense and also with a sense of optimism about the outcomes. Remember, in scientific investigation, you don't know what the outcome is going to be, and you don't have a way of influencing that outcome. So you're taking a calculated risk in the interest of scientific curiosity and learning more about your product. Many, many companies, in fact most, don't even pursue these paths. It's another reason for both confidence and for congratulations. The Brunswick Certified Program is a next step in distancing itself from, from the competition. Because for starters, the ORAC-5 testing is not required. To follow that up, the ORAC Certified Program is another dimension of quality assurance. What it does is it guarantees that Soul is being tested on a routine basis under strict quality assurance. That's why I say that this Brunswick certified seal is seeing as believing. In an instant, you can recognize the quality of testing that's gone into the product by seeing that on your promotional literature or on the label. And should challenge other products to, to do the same. So this will often be a key factor for separating out the both quality and performance of products. Now to step back a minute to, that, to the concept that Jeff introduced about antioxidants performing other vital functions. This is exactly what Dr. Pryor has said and it has motivated his research moving forward. He says, and I'll paraphrase here so as not to read it all, the relevance of ORAC as, as a marker for outcomes in human health. Now keep in mind that ORAC, the test, it's an in vitro chemistry test. By itself, it cannot tell us about outcomes in human health. It's not designed to do that. It's not a shortcoming of the test. It's simply not designed to do that. However, we can take steps by looking at foods with high ORAC values and connecting them to outcomes in health, which is what Dr. Pryor has done. And what he points to here is that th that research demonstrates that antioxidants 
are also significant in relation to other kinds of human health functions. And this is what we're going to explore in a minute. We return here to a comment I made earlier, these words from Dr. Pryor. These results do not correlate to a strict linear ranking of ORAC. What are we saying? Don't compare. It doesn't mean that a higher ORAC value necessarily relates directly to a better performance in vivo. What we have found is that quartiles, the highest groupings of ORAC, outperform the lowest groupings of ORAC. And Seoul resides in that highest quartile of results. And what Dr. Pryor has found in a seminal work that's called a meta-analysis, in other words, he looked at a wide range of studies that were related to the intake of antioxidant diets and outcomes in human health. And in many instances, these were what we call longitudinal studies that occurred over time with very large subject pools or cohorts. In one case, over 30,000 subjects were observed over 15 years. And this is what we call, is extremely valid epidemiological research. And what Dr. Pryor discovered is that an increased dietary intake of antioxidants, as measured by ORAC, is directly correlated to support of important human health functions. So in this case, we can tie not only antioxidant intake in our foods, but antioxidant intake as measured by ORAC to specific outcomes in human health as based on a variety of, of long-term human health clinical studies. This is very significant. So what, again, what we're trying to do here is to, to tie the performance of soul itself, not theoretically antioxidant ingredients or foods, but the product soul itself to significant health outcomes. Another friend and colleague, Jeff Blumberg, who presently runs the antioxidant research at USDA from Tufts University in Boston. And again, to paraphrase, what Dr. Blumberg is saying here is that to understand antioxidants, we must recognize that they're not only antioxidants, they're also anti-inflammatory, anti-aging agents. So they do a lot of heavy lifting. They perform in a variety of ways. Well, if that's the case, then can we look at how they perform in an efficient way that gives us meaningful results? And the answer is yes. And being the, the curious and uh, serious people that they are, the RAIN management team said, let's embark on that kind of study. Let's take the next step of investigation and see what we find. So we did. We took Seoul and we applied it to three cell-based assays. Now, cell culture is a bedrock of biomedical research. It's a preclinical tool that's an intermediate, but it's, an, it's a direction finder. It helps us understand by testing samples in live cell lines how they're likely to perform in vivo. It's a vital next, next generation test beyond ORAC. And we looked at an antioxidant assay, an anti-inflammatory assay, and an anti-aging assay. And here's what we found. This is the antioxidant assay. Let me interpret the numbers for you. There's a lot here that won't make sense, like micromoles QE per gram. That's simply a unit of measure, kind of like temperature or currency. And ask any economist to try to explain currency to you. All we need to know is, do your dollars work when you go to the store? In this case, what we're seeing, and this is on a cut portion of the certificate of analysis from Brunswick Labs, using soul, not an ingredient, not some concept of a product, but an actual product with the cellular antioxidant assay, a result of 144. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's put it in context. The control means that the, that the, the cells were exposed to free radicals without any protection. 
The average is the average of all other food and nutrition products tested by Brunswick Labs. And by the way, among those, I happen to know there are a number that are touted as, as uh, high antioxidant products. And finally, there's Seoul. So there, the importance is not the 144, but how does that 144 compare to other products that are important comparisons? So what do we take away from this? First, that these are, that the active agents in Seoul are bioavailable in the cells. Because a part of the cell-based process is that the, in order for them to do some work, they have to be absorbed through the cell membranes first. Second, that we've seen that there's significant reduction of free radicals compared to other average antioxidant products. And third, that there's no cellular toxicity the only concentrations we accepted in looking at the results were those that were completely safe to the cells. Keep in mind, these are, this is a test and the two following are done on the sole product itself. Second, we looked at a measure of anti-inflammation. Lo and behold, what do we use? TNF-alpha, NFKB. If you remember from Dr. Jeff, he talked about that repeatedly as a primary systemic marker of inflammation, well recognized in the research community. Now here, we're looking at a percentage of inhibition. So we don't need to put that number in context. We simply say that Seoul was able to inhibit or reduce the formation of inflammation, in this case, the formation of the protein NFKB by 33%. So there it is just in in comparison to the control, which obviously means you're introducing the inflammatory agent with no protection. And what do we take away here? Once again, the active agents in Seoul are bioavailable. They've been introduced successfully into the cell medium and perform some role. Second, that performance role, a 33% inhibition of cellular inflammation as, as triggered or stimulated by NFKB. And once again, because the, the only reported concentrations were those that were non-toxic to the cell, then that performance is at levels that are not toxic to the cell. And finally, with anti-aging. Now, as a measure of anti-aging, which is an extremely broad term, we use something quite precise, which is a protein called CERT1. And once again, here, we're looking at a percentage change. Now, in this case, it's a positive change. In other words, unlike NFKB, which is a, an inflammatory agent, CERT1 is known to promote longevity of cell life. So what we want to do in this case is stimulate the production of, of CERT1. And that's just what the test shows, a 62.4% exp increased expression of CERT1. So once again, compared to the control, we see a significant increase in performance or, or a benefit in this case. Bioavailable, it's made its way into this, through the cell membrane, it's acting within the cell, and it's delivering a benefit. And again, at no cellular toxicity. So where does this leave us? It shows that in this, in this process of discovery, exceeding expectations, expanding possibility, a possibility to understand our product, to convey that to you and the world. We've made great strides. What can come beyond this? Well, we do know that there are ways to continue to tie the performance of soul to outcomes in human health, perhaps by in vivo studies, but what we do know is that we continue to push ahead with a product that has the natural power of seeds and reigns commitment to excellence. The future is rich. So thank you very much. And best wishes to all of you.